Hi everyone, it's Lana from Lana Under Pressure, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make real southern fried chicken in your instant air fryer. Now most air fryer fried chicken recipes usually use a breaded, uh, a breading or a breaded type of coating, sort of like breadcrumbs or they'll use crushed cornflakes, and I have a few of those recipes and it's really good. Um, but when I'm thinking of fried chicken, I'm thinking more of that southern fried chicken where you have an egg wash or buttermilk and you have flour or seasoned flour. Now the reason you don't see a lot of those type of recipes in air fryer recipes is because flour is a really, really dry ingredient, probably the driest ingredient you can find. And so when you don't have the oil, like when you're deep frying to moisten the flour, what you end up getting is chicken covered in like a dry powdered flour. And it doesn't really work well in the air fryer. However, with this recipe and with my four step method, you'll be able to use that, get that southern fried chicken with the egg wash and the flour coating, that batter that you're looking for, without it being dry and cooked perfectly. So for our fried chicken recipe today, obviously we're gonna have to start with chicken. Now I'm using just the drumsticks because that's what my family likes the most, um, but you can use anything. You can use drumsticks, thighs, you can use the chicken breast or the wings. You can get a whole fryer and cut it up yourself. You just have to remember that if you're gonna use white meat and dark meat, they cook at different times and temperatures. And in my blog, uh, in the description below for the recipe, I'll put what those temperatures are, but you're either gonna have to start some of them ahead of time or take some of them out, you know, checking the temperature. Um, so that's really important. But today, I'm just gonna do the chicken legs. And so, uh, a really important tip for fried chicken, and this is if you're making it anyway, whether you're doing it in a deep fryer or doing it in the air fryer, is that you really need to season it. So in my recipe, I season it four times throughout the, throughout the method. And so the first time we're gonna season it is just the chicken itself. And you know, because I'm Cuban, yes, it's Southern fried chicken, but I gotta add adobo to it. So I like to sprinkle it with about, I don't know, like a tablespoon or so, just a good sprinkling of adobo. Eh, maybe that's not really a tablespoon, but you're just gonna sprinkle with that. And then you're gonna add a pinch of salt Eh, maybe two pinches. And you're just going to go ahead and mix it up. Now, if you don't have adobo, you can use any seasoning you want. You can just use salt and pepper, or if you have your own seasoning mix, you can use that. But adobo is the best, so i got to use that. And we're just going to mix that in, just like that, just a little bit so it's coated. And that's the first time we season it, seasoning number one. And we're just going to let it sit and move on to our next step. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our seasoning mix. And I make mine from scratch, but again, whatever you like to use in your fried chicken, if you have a seasoning salt that you like or if you have a recipe that your grandmother used, you can use that. But this is the one that I like and it has the things that I like in it. Um, and what that is, what I do is I mix up, it's gonna be one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, a half a tablespoon of paprika, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and then one teaspoon of Larry salt. Now I add the Larry salt, it has some of this stuff in it already, but this, this is something that my grandmother used a lot and I just really like the flavor. So you're gonna mix that in a small bowl just like this and make sure it's mixed really well. Perfect. And then you're gonna go ahead and set that aside and we're move, gonna move on to the egg wash and the flour. So for our egg wash or our dredge that we're gonna do, I have in uh, this, I like to use a, like a meatloaf or bread loaf pan only because it's the perfect size for a chicken leg. So I have two eggs in here and to that I'm going to add two tablespoons of milk. I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. And yes, I know I added salt before and I added salt to the chicken. But you have to remember that we're not going to use all of this egg wash, but it's important that it's really seasoned well. And we're going to go ahead and mix that really well. So. Once you've gone ahead and whisked that, we're going to add to our uh, egg wash, we're going to add a heaping teaspoon of the seasoning that we just made, or whatever seasoning you're using. And you want to whisk that really well, so that when you coat the chicken, it all gets some of the seasoning. And you want to whisk it, make sure there are no clumps or anything stuck on the side. Great. And now we're going to set that aside. And we're going to move on to the flour part. So now for the flour part of our uh, batter, I have in here uh, a cup and a half of flour, just all purpose flour, and you wanna make sure you use a good enough bowl that has enough room for you to like move the chicken around. Then we're gonna add a quarter cup of cornstarch, 
and then we're going to add the rest of our seasoning. And that's why I do the seasoning ahead of time in a small bowl so that I could use some for the egg wash and then use the rest for the flour. And you're going to mis whisk this really well. Now, you want to make sure that you can really see the seasoning in the flour. It's very important that the flour you use has a lot of seasoning because flour tastes like nothing. So, you know, that's another tip is that whenever you're making fried chicken, make sure your flour is seasoned really well. And if you can't see the seasoning in it and you can't really smell it, add a little more. Remember, that seemed like a lot of seasoning and a lot of salt, but we're not going to use all this flour on the chicken. So now we're going to go ahead and prepare the chicken. And so you want to have everything laid out. And one tip that I have is I like to let the chicken rest instead of putting it on a plate you know, to rest while you're doing all of it. I like to get a sheet pan and then use like a baking rack like this and put it on there. And that way I put the chicken uh, right on top of that after each step. And the reason I do this is because if you use a plate, some of that batter can either, you have a 50-50 chance of whether it's going to stick to the plate or stick to the chicken. Where here, you know, it doesn't have a lot of surface area and so a lot of it will stay on the chicken. So, I have my chicken legs and the first thing we're going to do is instead of going in the egg washer in the batter, this is my next uh, tip and this is really important, is we're going to dredge it in the flour first. So, that means we're just going to go ahead and put it in the flour, put your chicken in the flour, roll it around and then you want to tap it off really good. You want to tap off as much uh, flour as you can. The reason we do this is because if you have ever tried making fried chicken or fish or anything like that and you've taken it straight away and put it in a wet batter, you know that it's not going to stick and you you know, you've probably had that problem where you know you're frying chicken and either all of the batter fluffs you know sloughs off or when you go to eat it when it's done all of the batter comes off and the reason it does that is because when you have a, a wet protein and you try to put a wet batter on it it's like you know trying to put a sticker on a wet window right so the two won't stick together so the tip for that is and you can use this when you're making fried chicken anyway is to go ahead and put it first in the seasoned flour and then put it in the egg wash and that will help everything stick even while it's cooking so we've gone ahead and dredged our chicken in the flour now we're going to go ahead and put it in that egg wash and coat it really well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it right on my baking sheet and I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the chicken. Now notice, so like I said, this is four parts. So we went ahead and seasoned the chicken, so the first step. We put it in a seasoned flour, second step. We put it in a seasoned dredge and then we're going to move on to the fourth step. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the fourth part. And you're not going to get rid of your flour, your seasoned flour, because we're going to use that. But uh, you do want to go ahead and whisk it again because you want to make sure at each step that you redistribute all of that seasoning. Okay? And now we're going to re-put, re-dredge our chicken into the flour. And this is what's going to give that crispy coating. So, now we're going to take our chicken and we're going to go ahead and roll it around in the seasoned flour. Pat some of it off. You don't want to have, you know, big clumps of chicken. And then you're going to do that for each of your pieces of chicken. And if you need to whisk in between to redistribute it, uh, the seasoning that's in there, that's a good idea. And you're going to do that with all of the chicken and put it back on the tray. So now I've gone ahead and floured all my chicken. And so I did my four parts, the seasoning, the first flour, the egg wash, and then the flour again. Now, this is a really important tip, and um, I can't, this is what makes the air frying fried chicken with the flour work. What you're going to do is, once you've done that, you're going to let it sit on this baking rack for at least 15 minutes. And that is really, really important. And the reason you do that is because, like I had said before, flour is really dry. So if you allow it to sit there, what the flour will do is absorb and give it time to absorb that egg wash and get moist so that you won't have the flour, uh, the flour dried on top of the chicken. So you don't want to go ahead and put it straight into the air fryer because if you did that, if we didn't let it sit and we stuck it right into our air fryer, what would happen is you just get cooked chicken with a powdery flour coating and that's not what we want. 
So the way that we fix that is by allowing it to sit and really soak up all of that egg wash so that we don't have the dry flour. Now that your chicken has sat for 15 minutes, you're gonna notice a big difference between what it looked like when it had the flour on it and now that it's sat. You're gonna see that there's a lot less of that dry flour coating and that's exactly what you want, especially when air frying chicken. Now, you will see some parts that might have some dry flour, but I have a trick to that. And this is my next tip. So my next tip is to use an olive oil mister. Now, people ask me all the time, what is your favorite accessory for the air fryer, for the Omni and the Vortex? And I've shown you some of mine, but if you ask me what is the number one accessory, it's gonna be this. And this is the Topst uh, Olive Oil Mister. Now, I've used a couple of them, I've used different brands and different kinds, but this one right here is the absolute best. And I'm not saying that because they gave this to me, because they didn't, I had to buy it. My great, great grandpa doesn't own the company, so you know, I'm completely unbiased, and I've used a couple, and this one is the best. And the reason that is, is because this is one of the only ones where you can put olive oil in there, and when you press down hard on it, uh, when you press down, it'll actually mist it like an aerosol. And if you press uh, a little bit slower, it'll do a stream. So a lot of them, you know, you spray them and it lets out like a really, like a lot of olive oil. But this one, you can actually mist it. Now, you can use like the cans of Pam olive oil spray, and I have those, but this is so much better because, you know, you only buy it once, I think it was like $14, and I'll put um, a link to where you can buy it on Amazon in the description below. And in this case, what you're gonna do is for those little spots of dry flour, that's when you're gonna use the mister. And if you press down hard on this one, you're gonna just go ahead and mist it. And you know, it adds maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon in total of oil. So yes, you are adding some of the oil, but it's a lot less than you would be adding if you deep fried it or fry it. And you don't have to coat it completely. It's okay if there are some little dry spots. You know, just do it like that. And that's gonna help add uh, oil or fat a little bit, just a little bit to the flour, and that's what's gonna get it, those dry spots to brown. So now we're ready to go ahead and air fry. And we wanna go ahead and allow our Omni, or the Vortex, or the Omni Plus, whatever one we're using, to preheat. Now we're going to press the air fry button. We're gonna adjust the temperature to 380 degrees. We're gonna make the time 25 minutes and press start. Now, it may take shorter or longer time depending on the size of your chicken, so it's important to check your chicken with a thermometer for 165 degrees. So now that it's done preheating, we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken. And you're just gonna go ahead and open the oven door. And now notice that I have the drip pan on the very bottom, and then I have the rack in the middle position. And so you're just gonna go ahead and place your drumsticks or your chicken right inside. Now, I'm just doing four today for the video's sake, but I fit um, up to 12 drumsticks on here, so you can fit quite a bit. And if you wanna need some help, a good tip as far as placing them in is what I like to do is I'll pull the drip tray out, pull this pan out, that way any drip goes on to the drip pan, and just go ahead and place them in there, perfect. Move it back in, close the door, and it'll start by itself. So even though I set it for 25 minutes, and it's important to go ahead and check the temperature at around uh, when you have about 10 to nine minutes left, because you wanna make sure you don't overcook them, because the temperature depends on how big they are. And you'll see at about nine minutes it says, it says turn food, so we're gonna go ahead and turn them, check the temperature, and cook just a little bit more if it needs it. So I've gone ahead and flipped them over, and I checked the temperature, and they're at about 165. So really, they only need a few more minutes, and then I'm gonna take them out. So there you have it. Perfect southern fried chicken in the air fryer. As you see, the uh, coating isn't coming off. It's really crispy. So I hope you enjoyed my video on southern fried air fried chicken. And if you did, if you would go ahead and just click below and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and all of my recipes and the accessories will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye!